We say goodbye to a bright region and calm down from a big solar storm, but not before a mini solar storm gives us one more chance for Aurora. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week has been quite the story. Over the past week, we've been dealing with a big solar storm that has bumped us up to G2 levels and has lasted multiple days. And as we take a look at the front side sun, you can see the culprit right there. That is a big coronal hole, and that's what's been sending us an extended burst of fast solar wind, and that has brought aurora down to many parts of the world, even down to mid-latitudes. However, we are beginning to wane just a little bit. That coronal hole is now rotating to the sun's far side, and and it's taking with it region 2773. This region has been boosting the solar flux into the mid-70s over the past week or so. However, as it rotates to the sun's far side, it is beginning to drop that solar flux down again. So we're going to get to the low end of marginal for radio propagation on Earth's day side, especially since we don't have any more bright regions in Earth view and we don't see a lot on the sun's far side. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I'm afraid you're just going to have to hang in there for a little bit. Meanwhile, before we drop completely back down to totally quiet conditions, we do have a mini solar storm that's hitting right now and it's managed to boost, uh, boost us up back to active conditions. So we might get a little bit more aurora, especially at high latitudes and possibly down to mid latitudes here over the next 24 hours before we finally get a reprieve. Aurora photographers can take a look at all their aurora photos, change the batteries in their cameras and just say, whew, Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, it continues to be a bit on the low side, and therefore by proxy, the solar flux continues to be low. We have had region 2773 boost that flux just a little bit, but it's really not been a flare producer, as you can see by pretty much the flat line here. And it's going to continue to be that way uh, over this past week. And as you can see near the very end of the plot, you can see that red line beginning to tank. That's from region 2773 rotating to the sun's far side along with that x-ray flux so is the solar flux beginning to tank we could be at the very low end of marginal for radio propagation here on earth's day side and sadly it's going to continue to be that way easily over the next week so amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to have marginal to maybe even poor radio propagation here over this next week and hopefully things will improve after that Switching to our solar storm conditions, can you believe it? We've actually been a bit on the stormy side. It's been so long I almost forgot what storms look like. Back on the 24th, we got hit by a small pocket of fast solar wind that managed to bump us up to storm levels, but then we kind of quieted down for a little bit. And then by the end of the 25th, we got hit by a bigger pocket of fast solar wind. It bumped us back up to storm levels and we got some gorgeous aurora photos and yet the storming sporadically just kept happening. And by the 28th, bam! Damn, we were up at G2 level solar storms. We we're having gorgeous aurora even down to mid latitudes. And then things kind of calmed down a little bit and calmed down a little bit. And finally, by the turn of the month, we are finally getting back into the green. And yet, even as we've calmed down and really much gone back to quiet conditions, bam, we get hit yet again. Here's that mini solar storm that, that I was talking about. And it doesn't take all that much because the Earth shield is just so rattled. So we're back up to active conditions now. And this may last easily over the next 24 hours before things finally begin to quiet down yet again. And now for your Leo Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. As we switch to our low energy particle environment, now these are the fluxes that cause surface charging on the outside of spacecraft, including the solar arrays that then can discharge and cause electrical short circuits and upsets. You can see the fluxes in and around GEO have not been all that bad the past couple days. We've had a couple injections in and around the dawn side, but they really haven't built up all that much. We keep getting these particles flushed, so the fluxes are staying reasonably low, and that's good news for satellite operators in GEO. It doesn't look like spacecraft charge 
charging is going to be an issue like it was a few days ago during the solar storm. These fluxes were much higher. However, as we switch to our higher energy particle environment, now these are the particles that can penetrate deeply into the spacecraft interior and cause deep dielectric charging and internal charging upsets. You can see it in around the 30th, we started having some decent injections and it started building up the fluxes in the geo, inside of geo just a little bit indefinitely as we move closer to the MEO orbits. And as we look at the uh, electron fluxes, you can see for the two MeV electron fluxes in and around the 30th is where we really started crossing that alarm threshold, that risk threshold for internal charging. And sure enough, over the past few days, we have maintained uh, a, a decent level above that, uh, that uh, electron flux threshold charge risk. And so we are going to continue to have a risk for internal charging and it's an integrated effect. So the longer it stays above that threshold, the bigger risk for uh, internal charging. So you satellite operators, that could be an issue for you. And as we take a look at our radiation clock, you can actually see that inner ring, is, it, which shows the internal charging risk. It's bad all the way from dawn clear to midnight. So satellite operators, you may not have a risk for surface charging over these next few days, but the risk for deep dielectric charging is still there and it will continue to be so until that uh, radiation belt begins to die down a little bit, which could easily be maybe three or four days from now. And during this extended solar storming that we had over this past week, aurora views were captured over many parts of the world, and I can't possibly show them all to you this week, so I'll show some highlights this week, and then I'll show you some more next week, like these beautiful views in Norway. And we saw gorgeous views in Finland. And it was all over Scotland. And in Denmark and it was in Ireland, and it even dropped down to England, just west of Liverpool. And as we travel over the pond, it was seen all over Iceland. And as we travel from Iceland into the Western Hemisphere, it was seen in many parts of Canada, including Nanavut, and in Yellowknife. We saw it in Manitoba, and in Saskatchewan, and of course in Alberta, we got some gorgeous award-winning shots in Alberta, including a moon bow. Amazing. And it even dropped down into the United States. It was seen in Michigan. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A, staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you take a look at the sun in Stereo's view, you can see that region 2773 disappearing well behind Stereo's west limb. And if you take a look at the rest of the disk, man, there's just not a lot going on. We have a few spatterings of bright regions kind of trying to start, but they fizzle almost as quickly as they start. You notice that they're at high latitudes, so that tells you they are solar cycle 25 fizzles, but that's really not quite the oomph we need for, to get a new bright region up and running yet. So unfortunately, we don't see any chance for solar storming, and we don't see a lot of chance for boosting that solar flux. So aurora photographers, you're going to be able to take a break for a while, and amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, it looks like marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side is going to be on the menu easily over this next week. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of a full moon on our way to a third quarter. And by the 10th, the moon will be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are getting hit with that mini solar storm that's hitting Earth right now, and it's going to probably cause issues for the next couple days. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm. Now, at mid latitudes, we're also expecting active conditions, but only about a 5% chance of a minor storm. When these conditions will begin to wane very slowly, and by about midweek to the latter part of the week, we should definitely be settling back down to quiet conditions, especially at mid-latitudes. High latitudes might take a little bit longer to settle down. And then as we roll into the weekend, things will be nice and quiet, hopefully. And everybody can kind of breathe a sigh of relief as things get back to normal. 
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, so we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make GPS users very happy. I know we've been dealing with a solar storm, which kind of makes GPS reception a little bit dicey, but at least we don't have solar flares to contend with or radio bursts that can cause issues for you as well. So enjoy things as uh, things begin to quiet back down with that solar storm, because GPS reception will continue to get better and better, especially on Earth's night side. And sadly, though, with the spotless sun, we also have solar flux sitting in the low 70s. I'm going to take a risk and not drop it down to the high 60s, but man, we're going to be hugging that hairy edge of marginal for radio propagation on Earth's day side. Hopefully, also with those solar storms dying down, that makes amateur radio operators and you emergency responders a bit happier that propagation is going to get a little bit easier for you, especially on Earth's night side. Now, also because uh, we we are still trying to climb out a solar minimum. We do have a higher cosmic ray flux than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is trying to calm down. We've been dealing with a big solar storm over this past week that's brought aurora to many parts of the world. And just as we begin to settle down from that, wham, we get hit by yet another little mini solar storm and we're back up to active conditions. So this means we get another chance for aurora here over the next day or so, especially at high latitudes. And sadly for you satellite operators, well, I know the geo environment's pretty tough right now. We're getting some decent deep dielectric charges risk. And with this mini solar storm hitting, that's only going to make things and exacerbate things even worse. So we were hoping things were going to calm down over the next couple days, but it looks like you may have oh, maybe a, as much as a week before things really begin to calm down in geo orbit. So just kind of hang in there. Meanwhile, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, we're losing region 2773 as well. So the solar flux is dying back down and we're going to be sitting at marginal radio propagation conditions on Earth's day side. And sadly, from the look on the sun's far side, it doesn't look like there's much of a reprieve there. So just hang on for another week or so and let's hope we get some more bright regions in Earth view. Meanwhile, GPS users, well, you know, thank goodness the solar storms are slowly beginning to die down because that means GPS reception is going to get better, especially on Earth's night side. And with the low solar flux and no solar flares or radio blackouts, GPS reception on Earth's day side should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.